Well, you know they're going to compete on the floor. So now the fans said, you know what? We're leading the league in attendance. Let's show out too today. Averaging 15,000 plus throughout this season to watch this South Carolina Gamecock basketball team. And this is what they want to see. They want to feed her early. They want to get Cardoza going early. She's got the height advantage. And so, as you can see, they did a really simple two to five wing entry. If you're not going to bring the double with Vanderbilt, you got to be careful because the one thing you don't want to have happen is for your post game to get in foul trouble, especially when you need Washington on the floor. Cardoza on many watch lists, but also a great rim protector rebounder as well top five and those categories within the sec jordan cambridge leading the way the point guard for vanderbilt along with jordan oliver justine passat ayana moore as well as sasha washington here's Moore, 23 and black averaging 20 points a game and gets the first two for the doors here on the road the isolation, the patience that Vanderbilt is running their sets allows them to get the ball right in the sweet spot for, for Ayana to be able to have that one-on-one, -on -one and she was able to nail it. Well, the 6-7 center, Cardozo, goes down as they look to get it inside to her once again. Cambridge with the bounce pass over to Washington. A little pump fake, and in. Vanderbilt takes the lead. Cardozo looking down for Kitts. Keeps that... Plant foot on the ground, offensive rebound as it ricochets off. Six seconds to go on the shot clock and a traveling violation. Shea Ralph in her third season as head coach has got this Vanderbilt team off to an outstanding start. In fact, the second best start in program history and they're sitting pretty right now. Uh, pretty high in the SEC at number three. Well, I like how Coach Ralph and her staff have built the culture here where Vanderbilt is coming into games. They're going to play you tough. They're going to give maximum effort, and they're going to play together. They're going to move the basketball. They're going to make sure that they get the best shot for their team. Cardoso hauls it in. Bree Hall along that left side looking inside and through the hands of Jordan Cambridge, who is an excellent defender. One of the best in terms of steals, second best in the NCAA. Bree Hall going up against her, bodies her, and puts it in. Bree Hall, we talked about how exceptional she was. And South Carolina, they do a great job. Look at that block right there. Cardoza said, give me that. But they do a great job, and what you've seen is that they've grown every single game. You would think that after coming off of an emotional win like LSU, that play would kind of suffer. But Don Staley said, no, we're coming back to our same routine. Justine Passat, one of the two transfers on the team, air mails it. Raven Johnson coming back up the floor with her five. And Johnson, that was an easy take. Great recognition, moved it, and she knew exactly what she wanted to do. Well, Bree Hall and Raven Johnson, we talked about them being that excellent backcourt for this South Carolina team. They're not settling for jumpers. What they're doing is it's like, if you can't stop me and get me to the rack, I'm going. Justine Passat, they've got to keep their eye on her because she's an excellent three-point shooter, knocks it down. And came over from Tennessee, and the answer quickly right back on the other end for South Carolina. So Cardozo with four quick points in this one. Just over three minutes gone by in this opening quarter. Washington with a hand in her face and knocks it down from the free throw line. So Sasha Washington, the junior out of Lawrenceville, Georgia, who started off the year on a roll. They want her to keep going in SEC play as Cardozo is just having her way right now inside. Cambridge off the screen, has a wide open look from three and knocks it down. They kick it out, Bree Hall with the look for three, won't go down. And Coach Staley on the side there, 16th season as the South Carolina head coach. Am I reading that right? I am reading that right. Well, <laughs> five of the last eight Final Fours? Yep. Including three straight. <laughs> An historic season coming off of last year's SEC regular season and tournament championship. And the team had a program record 26 wins along with seven SEC championships now. I mean, what she has built. What she's established is that when you come to play for South Carolina, you are coming here to play and potentially win national championships. So she makes sure that everyone has that dialed in. And right now, Cardoza's dialed in 
and making sure she establishes herself in the paint. And all of her players that completed their eligibility all walked away with a degree. So very, very happy to be able to call myself a former Lady Vaughn. And now the crowd getting into it here, all knotted at 12 apiece. Washington, baseline pass, and asking for it is Bakura instead. That one bounces out, third rebound of the game for Cardoza to go along with her eight points. A big chunk have come from inside as Mylasia Fulwiley, the sensational freshman. Change her direction. She's just so entertaining to watch, especially in transition. And, you know, she responded in that LSU game. I thought she came out and didn't really give them the spark that they needed coming off the bench. And then Coach Staley and her staff. Vanderbilt, that was one of the things Shea Ralph said, hey, look, in order for us to stay in this ball game we have got to defend and this vanderbilt team with uh 17 wins on the season uh top for third most in the nation simplify that and obviously when you're top four and the top four in the sec huge amount of respect by her teammates and how she comes in every day and works extremely hard and nice back screen on the back side to get the layup in the end out of bounds play Fagan back the other way. Sanaya Fagan, the six foot three junior out of the Peach State, her first two points of the game. And boy, she's got great skill and progress. Pro promise as so does Makara out of Poland, the freshman knocking it down. See here the final 10 seconds winding down of the opening quarter. Vanderbilt with a one point lead. Can South Carolina change that? Oh, the soft touch from Raven Johnson and kissing it off the rim. Bounce, bouncing down as Raven Johnson helps South Carolina out. Vanderbilt stay right in it. Well, this South Carolina team last year shot 31% from the three-point line. And this year they're shooting 41%. That is a dramatic change, but that also has to do with personnel. When you're able to go and, and, and in the transfer portal get a pow pow who's leading the SEC in three-point field goal percentage, and then Fu Wiley's able to come in. That says a lot about this South Carolina team, but Vanderbilt is not shying away from knocking down the three ball as well. Agamakura, another three-pointer going down. Four from seven from long range for the Commodores. And eight points now for the true freshman. Well, that's what she does. Makara is a three-point specialist, so you've got to make sure that you know where she's at. Neil Pierre over to Moore. And keep moving it around, putting her head down and going right at Cardozo. Hopefully combat the length of Cardozo, and she was able to isolate her. Coach Shea Ralph was able to isolate her. Cardozo had to play a little bit closer to her, but then she's also able to take it off the bounce. And they go high to Cardozo, and that's two plus one more on the way. If she is behind you, you got to push her farther towards the baseline. And uh, again, to pick up that second foul for Sasha Washington, she's going to probably have to sit her the remaining part of the second quarter. Just checking in, Ayanna Mitchell. And there, Pierre was blocked from behind, and it's going to be South Carolina basketball. Ashlyn Watkins, number two in the SEC, behind her teammate in blocks per game and what a terrific athlete she is and the physical nature of her game and the presence that she creates inside tessa johnson who's the sharp shooter coach don Staley says look this is a player who can just flat out shoot the basketball are the visitors and that lead passed just too far in advance Frank up their defensive intensity, intensity, and when you do that, that's going to lead to transition baskets. But give Vanderbilt, again, a lot of credit for being all over the offensive glass. They've got five to South Carolina's three, and they are out-rebounding South Carolina right now on the boards, plus three. Bree Hall once again, and Breezy makes it look easy as she's been great on this seven nothing run as that one's wiped away getting to their spots defensively and causing a turnover 
Picks up her dribble. And dangerous pass kept alive by Makara. They've got to get a shot up before it expires. And a shot clock violation. He asked Shay Ralph, hey, what's the difference? How did this team make such a huge step this year after just winning three games in the SEC a season ago? She says, hey, we've got a healthy Jordan Cambridge and we've got a healthy Ayanna Moore. And that was part of the big reason why we've taken another step this season. You know, a lot of times on your scouting report, you say, "Who's the who is the head of the snake? SEC thus far in terms of winning their opener against Mississippi State. First time on the road that they had done that. And Tahina Pow Pow gets on the board. Show great tenacity as Cardozo blocks that one. Full Wiley trying to get it. So was Moore. Moore comes up with it. And a great extension. From Cardozo and Full Wiley trying to stay step for step with Moore, but Ayanna Moore wins that one. A good patience here, but got to get a shot up as Ralph sees her teammate, or rather player, Ryan Allen, come flying right her way and just gives her a <laughs> hug right afterwards to say, hey, great effort. I love to see that. Keep it up. I was hoping that coach Ralph would move and she just stood there and so the reaction you know was was I'm glad that there was no collision because there was nowhere for coach Ralph to go <laughs> and pow pow with three seconds left on the shot clock gets it to go down with the mid range largest lead of the game for South Carolina as we told you earlier they've been trading buckets all throughout this matchup. This possession really started with Fuwali's defense. She, she took about 15 seconds off of the clock there, guarding Cambridge and not allowing her to get an open look. And again, she doesn't get as much credit on her defense, but if you watch her, she's like a knack on people. Like, I would put her on, she's like, hey, you're open. I'm going to deny you the basketball. You're not going to get any touches. I'm going to pick you up 94 feet. I'm going to guard you in the half court. This young lady is really special. Tahina Pow Pow, she's been special all season long from three-point range. She leads the nation in three-point percentage, and guess what? You hear the fans inside Colonial Life. They are moving the basketball and doing a great job of trying to find the players, and then here comes the steal right here. Well, Ashlyn Watkins, who can dunk the basketball, but the defender gets over in time. She draws the foul and one. Watkins was eyeing her <laughs> coming down the court just to see if she potentially can get in front of in front of her, but she was unable to. But great finish here at the basket and taking the contact. And she helps to add just another dimension. For this Gamecock basketball team. It just looks effortless yeah. with her. Yeah. Um, she's such a great athlete, and she's developing her mid-range game, but her ability to go up and just knock down uh, block shots and dunk the basketball just look effortless. Well, that was a much-needed bucket from Ayanna Moore to snap a scoring run. And the answer back on the other end from Bree Hall, who's got seven. Again, the patient. Doors will inbound it on the baseline. Right here, Vanderbilt went quick in the shot clock here. Makara has come off the bench and really been a huge spark for Vanderbilt. I would love to see this matchup again, but, you know, it might not be till the SEC tournament. It could be NCAA tournament, but it had all things related to what championship programs look like and it was players making plays down the stretch it was big time play calling by coaches and again this is such a dominant south carolina team where you can go to your bench and look what Bacon was able to do for this south carolina <laughs> team to give them that momentum going into the half
They lead by a dozen at the intermission here against Vanderbilt. Aga Makura doing a great job off the bench, as you mentioned, for Vanderbilt as the doors open the second half with possession and quickly Ayanna Moore gets on the board for Vanderbilt. I think Moore's got to go hunting. I think she's got to go look for her shot even more, get more attempts up because she is one young lady that can score the basketball, obviously averaging 20 points a contest in SEC play. Still got to go inside to Cardoza because, again, Washington does not want to pick up an easy foul. Ayanna Moore with the take and lays it in. Bree Hall puts it back to the point guard, Tahina Pow Pow. Underneath the basket, the reverse, no good. Chloe Kitts got in there, but the doors come up with it. Jordan Cambridge finding Justine Passat trailing. And Cambridge pull up jumper from the free throw line is true. Jordan Cambridge who paces this team and points with more than 14 a game. Nice save there from Bree Hall underneath the basket. <laughs> And just reverse it, lay up and scoop it in there. And a much-needed basket by this South Carolina team. Vanderbilt again pushing tempo, looking to score early in transition. And the pull-up jumper contested, not the best shot right there. This gives, again, this South Carolina team the chance to run the rim. Look at the rim running right there by Cardoza, keeping it high. Great job by South Carolina in transition. Cardozo, they've been feeding the hot hand. She's got 14. Vanderbilt offense, or what have you observed coming out of the locker room? Well, I think Vanderbilt needs to, again, we talked about their guard play and making sure that Cambridge gets good looks, making sure that they're ta being patient. They are getting out off of bad shots, missed shots, and turnovers. And so shot selection is going to be key for Vanderbilt as well. Cardozo with a nice move, and Cardozo ever so sweet, 16 points now. And we saw just how dominant she could be in moments, and she's really wanted that as Ayanna Moore with a hand in her face, ever so tough of a shot. Johnson looking off instead, finds Bree Hall. Got to get to work quickly, three and counting. Johnson for three, drains it. The boy Raven. Johnson, a much improved three-point shooter. The final four performance versus Iowa where they sagged off of her and dared her to shoot. She's come back as Jordan Cambridge runs it in the lane and in. Well, you kind of got to take that personal, right? When oh, someone, yeah. I mean, I would when someone didn't guard me from the three-point line, but Raven Johnson is doing everything right for this team. Give it to the big girl inside for the and one. And when you have Cardoza with having that presence in the paint, you've got to get her to the basketball. You talked about the connection between Pat Summon and so many. And to be teammates with Marsha Lake and to see what Shea Ralph has been able to do with Vanderbilt in the SEC. And by the way, Vanderbilt almost had to. Shea Ralph even told us, hey, Pat Summit recruited me out of high school. She eventually went on to go play with the UConn Huskies won a national championship there. In fact, defeating Pat Summit's <laughs> Lady Vols for the Huskies' second title. But the fact that Shea Ralph was that caliber of player that Pat Summit, because that, that's well, a Shea Ralph was one of those players that you knew high basketball IQ was going to be a player that could score the basketball multiple ways. And she's brought a lot to the game, not only as a player, but also as a coach. Will this be the team to do it? We'll have some more season to play to see if it can come to fruition as the shot clock is winding down. And a He's got 13 points, four of seven shooting, four rebounds. Just a solid performance by her. Skip pass over to Raven Johnson, who drills it from three. Okay, Raven. I Johnson. <laughs> Woo. She's all in her bag today. Yeah. Cambridge looking, looking. Splits a couple of defenders. Swings it over in the corner to Makara again, who's got some ice there. Okay. We see you. 
16 points now for the true freshman. And Makura is having herself a day, especially from long range. As Pow Pow, nice touch there on the baseline. Just so smooth with her action. Great read there with the head fake and then to go in. But I like that Vanderbilt is not shying away. And they're looking to nail the three ball to get themselves back into it. Cambridge with another three right there. Again, get some defensive stops here. You could get this game into single digits possibly. Pow Pow gets it off the mark. Cardozo working on the offensive glass. I think she's just had such a solid performance, just owning the paint, utilizing her size and her presence. And look at her running the floor here. She's just playing extremely hard right now. Right now with an SEC career high, 21 points for Cardozo. And Chloe Kitts off the mark, but Cardozo is there to get the rebound, and she's fouled. A season ago, and domination has been an attitude that she's embraced. Today, she looks like she wants it, and she's playing in the moment, and she's doing all the little things to be successful today. Diana Moore over to Sasha Washington. Oliver looking, a lot of movement. South Carolina going step for step with the doors. And a foul along the baseline. And Don Staley coaching up her freshman right now as Washington. South Carolina right now again has so much depth, so many players that can come in and keep the level of play. They're either going to keep it at the same. We head to the fourth quarter, but here let's see if Vanderbilt can put points on the board before. No. For Wiley has an opportunity at the buzzer. A strong third quarter. Not just women's sports, but all sports. And to have Lamont talk about Dawn that way, um, her, her embracing uh, the new coach that came in in 2022. But you also got to look at what South Carolina men are doing this year. Earlier in the week, Dawn was there for that game and she was in yesterday so you think about this huge marquee matchup on thursday so don is in the house <laughs> tuesday for the game they go to baton rouge big win one thousandth of this program history and you would have thought that after that lsu and then it was a it was going hard four rounds a hard tough fought four rounds that the next day you would take off no they came back, they watched film, she kept them in their routine, making sure that they were disciplined in the action and the play action that they needed to run today, and it has definitely paid off. Cambridge over to Washington, and she's foul. And a chance to play the three-point play. Coach Don Staley, especially over the last 13 seasons, look at that. 86% win shoot. Win percentage better than that. And just keeps building. And 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 not only that, you know, we talk so much about Pat Summon and what she means to the game of what she meant to the game of basketball and still feeling her her legacy. But Dawn Staley likes to see herself as a dream merchant. That's what she calls herself. And so the way that she has been so vocal, everyone's paying attention. Obviously, you can't turn away from this top-ranked South Carolina team. This is where they have been often, especially under the last several years when they won their first national championship in 2017, again in 2022. For the season, um, they're outscoring their opponents, obviously, in the paint. We can talk about that. 20 plus 26 for the season and by plus 23 points per game in SEC, SEC action. And they're shooting right at around 60% in the paint. This team is destined to go very deep in the tournament, both SEC and NCAA. Very balanced attack, five players averaging double digits. Uh, I don't know what else they can do statistically. <laughs> Zania Fagan, who coach Dawn Stanley says, hey, she's the most skilled player on our team. She can do it all and showing off some moves right there. 
the launch from three, and it's airmail. What do you think about Malaysia Full Wiley and Tessa Johnson, part of the freshman class who's just going to keep getting better and better with more time? You were a coach, Nikki. To try to keep players with the transfer portal, with NIL, and to try to have them buy in to say, hey, you may come into this program and you might sit for a minute. You, you, you're you going to get some, some playing time, but you may not be able to show off everything that you can do. Well, I think what's very telling with Dawn Staley and her staff is they identify the players. They're going to play together. And when you're averaging 19 assists a game, everyone can get fed. And they're so supportive. You can see that they're very close to one another. You can see that by how they celebrate each other, whether you're in the game or on the bench. Um, this team is one team that is taking on the personality of their head coach. Johnson saved that one. And is fouled on the way up. Nikki Fargus, Tiffany Green. And then South Carolina was powered by Camila Cardoza. South Carolina has done just a phenomenal job. You look at the history of the South Carolina and those players who stayed here, the, the Leah Bostons, um, the, um, I'm going to give you another good one, Asia Wilsons of the world. Um, it just helps to have those players in state. Looking for the basketball as Jordan Cambridge set to inbound it. Anka Makura, who has been terrific off the bench for the Commodores. And inside to Camille Pierre. And in that effort against Auburn, another double-double against Mizzou as well. Well, she's definitely very skilled and very athletic. The good things that they did, obviously there's a lot of good positives, but she's someone that her future... One of those top recruits out of the class of 2023 is Ashlyn Watkins. Just look at the hustle of this Vanderbilt team. You know, they're not even playing the score. Right now, they're playing to play each possession the, as hard as they possibly can. When we have bad, bad plays, what's our body language? How are we looking and, and what are we doing for each other? So a lot of positives about what Shea Ralph has been able to establish. We talked about the net. And 53. I mean, the turnaround that we saw from last year to this year, 17 wins already this season in the top half of the conference is Pierre on the make. This is a group that will always fight because that's exactly what Shea Ralph expects of you. That's what she wants to draw out of you. That was halfway down, popped back out from Bree Hall. You talked about the activity. How, how is everybody handling everything? The bench is standing up, wanting that basket for their teammate. Being active, celebrating energy. Fun to watch in transition in Fuwali because she can do some things that you're looking at her and saying, what? <laughs> Big rebound right here. Big time rebound. Still time. As Vanderbilt looking to come up with a stop here on the defensive end. Who Wiley thought about it instead. Malaysia over to Bree Hall as Hall is fouled. Again, 19 assists per game by this South Carolina team. Says a lot. Give up the basketball for the best shot for the team. They've assisted on 18 of their 33 made field goals. Obviously, 16 assists compared to just one turnover for the ball handlers. For South Carolina, the dish over to Washington. More to Washington. Credit Moore with the assist and great find to Sasha Washington, who's got 18 points. Again, to put up 70 points against the South Carolina defense. Vanderbilt has a lot of weapons offensively. Cambridge has 14. Washington, as you mentioned, has 18. This team has... A little bit of punch coming off the bench. I think when you look at what Pierre is going to be able to do in the near future, um, there's a lot of positives that you can take from this game. And credit Vanderbilt for continuing just to shoot and keep yeah. going. Number one field goal percentage defense for South Carolina. Just the fourth time this season that they've given up 70 points. They did it Thursday against LSU, Notre Dame at the start of the year. 
and then Maryland as well. So not easy to come by buckets against this game Gamecock crew. Who can defeat South Carolina? Really just themselves. And the question mark was maybe free throws. This afternoon, they've been excellent. Nine of ten from the charity strike. Who can, if any? I uh, don't know how you. South I don't Carolina. know how. I don't know. Uh, it's it's just to your point. It's South Carolina not playing and sticking to South Carolina's game plan uh, because the talent is there, the skill level is there, the balanced attack. They can shoot the three. They can get to the rim. They can put the ball inside to the post game who can also score just very balanced in every aspect <laughs> my laser full volley coach don Taylor, she's generational because she could do things that you just don't expect them to do that didn't necessarily work out but that was okay she recovered and she was able to knock down the three anyway she's running the floor up ahead and tahina pow pow over to Bree hall and they're just gonna keep their foot on the gas and keep going as full Wiley wanted some more. A little heat check right there. <laughs> yeah, she's she's special. She's got the potential to put her name in the hunt for not only all SEC team, but all SEC freshman of the year. She's a fun player to watch. Just past their season average. Of 91 now points as Ashlyn Watkins blocks that one. Emphatically, might I add, that was like a big swat. That was almost like a spike. <laughs> <laughs> another another one, right one there. As game comes to an end, Gamecocks remain undefeated at home. They move to 19 and 0 oh in the top rank. Gamecocks down Vanderbilt 91 to 74. 51st straight win at home, extending their program record for Nikki Vargas. I'm Tiffany Green. We had a great.